there. We're back again with Geek Out with Perry. In this installment, we're going to talk about one of my favorite features of Exchange, role-based access control, otherwise known as RBAC. So Perry, we changed the access control method so dramatically in Exchange 2010. Why do we do this? Um, it was really, if you go back to beginning of Exchange 2007, it was, uh, took a step back and thought about what was preventing us from being able to make sure that uh, you could actually delegate meaningful uh, sets of work. And um, our conclusion was, it actually was that the model for the way we were doing uh, uh, our administrative functionality was busted. Okay. In the old world, we basically were kind of an object-oriented, noun-focused world. Uh, our system management story was largely focused on our UI. Mm -hmm. uh, and our business logic was entwined in that UI. We had some scripting interfaces, but they tended to be business logic that was written in parallel. Uh, and uh, uh, when you have that kind of a world, which always seems to devolve into some nested tree of containers with items in them. Okay. Okay. When you start thinking about access controls on those things, you start saying, well, okay, I can read one of these things or I can write to them, you know, I can modify some of its properties, either the container or the object, and clearly I can inherit some of these things. But really I'm putting a set of check marks or X's on there on read and write access for these things. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then um, you'd always have this sort of faith that if you come up with the right set of complicated read and write controls on all these objects, you could create a coherent set of roles for administrators. Okay. But if you take a step back and get out of the details of this, you start to realize there's something really fundamentally uh, broken with this model. Think about uh, a very common operation, moving a mailbox. Okay. Okay? It's something that you need to do very regularly. Mm -hmm. uh, should be a fairly uh, straightforward process, and you'd like to delegate it to um, fairly uh, um, straightforward people that don't have a lot of security checks associated with them. Okay. But moving a mailbox involves reading it, Mm -hmm. and then writing the destination. Yeah. So to delegate somebody in this world the ability to move a mailbox, you're basically giving them read and write access to every single mailbox. Mm -hmm. Effectively, in MSIT, that role is one of the most dangerous ones because they can read and write Bill Gates' e e email. Um, to get out of, the way, uh, out of that world, we really thought we needed to move to a uh, verb-oriented uh, world. In other words, the problem isn't really with the ACLs and the ACEs that you have to sprinkle around here. It's really about the whole model for how you uh, manage the system. Okay. Um, fortunately, while we were thinking through this, uh, a great team within Microsoft was coming up with uh, the new uh, PowerShell that was commandlet-based. Essentially, creating a set of coherent operations that were all verbs, right, that took... Uh, the uh, items that you needed to manipulate as parameters, right? Okay. So now you have a set of verbs, like move mailbox, mm -hmm. that you can set controls on. Okay. So now I can delegate access to the verb of moving a mailbox, mm -hmm. which doesn't actually enable uh, a, an administrator to uh, read the underlying data mm -hmm. or write the underlying data. Yeah. only gives them access to actually running that particular commandlet, mm -hmm. okay? Getting this all right ended up taking us two releases. So in 2007, we put the, the base uh, in there by uh, rewriting our entire system management story to be commandlet based, uh, working in this um, uh, PowerShell environment that provided rich scripting interfaces. Mm -hmm. That enabled us in 2010 to then actually implement uh, meaningful roles that were flexible and very fine-grained. Mm -hmm. So not only can you uh, set control at the commandlet level, but you can even control access at the parameter level within the individual commandlets. Uh -huh. um, it requires moving to this whole model of uh, 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 a verb world to make, uh, make it work well. It also required us uh, to wait until we had a uh, uh, really good uh, remote PowerShell story mm -hmm. because clearly to do the checking, you need to make sure that every uh, operation on every single server mm -hmm. goes through a central check on uh, um, uh, and gate uh, to make sure that uh, 
um, uh, the, the right uh, policies are in place. It still takes advantage of Active Directory and groups and uh, that sort of thing. But in the end, it becomes a very straightforward uh, process for uh, an administrator to think through um, the different uh, activities that somebody in help desk, somebody managing uh, storage, mm -hmm. um, their records officer um, uh, should be allowed to do, uh, and then uh, create a set of permissions based on groups that allow them to get those activities done without giving them access to things that they would like to uh, keep protected from uh, policy, security reasons, that sort of thing. It even allows you to delegate to end users okay. some of your own self-admin uh, um, activities, uh, which we started in 2007 and expect to expand on in 2010 through um, our web-based uh, 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 UI that's available to end users to control some of their, their, uh, uh, their own administrative settings. Okay. Thanks for watching this episode of Geek Out with Perry. I certainly like referring to RBAC as evolving from a noun to a verb in action-oriented world, and hope you did too. Please continue to watch and check out Perry's blog.